Good evening everyone and thank you for joining us tonight for our midweek devotion. My name is Eddie Smith and I'm an elder at Northside Community Church. Um, tonight uh, we will cover uh, a topic that we're working on in the church uh, and a book that's uh, the book of Jude uh, near the end of the Bible just before the book of Revelations the book of Jude and uh, just to pick up on, on what I said last week on, uh, on the Bindwick devotion that Jude uh, is the name of um, uh, uh, brother, a brother to James and James is, um, uh, is from the book of James and as we know James is, uh, is a half brother to Jesus and so Jude is a half brother to Jesus as well and Jude wrote this uh, book in 65 AD and so we're looking some many many years back and of course Jude was writing to to people who uh, he was worried about firstly he he started off for, uh, with the idea to write to people about salvation and then he realized that there's so much false teaching going on in the church with amongst Christians that he ended up writing this letter to warn uh, his fellow Christians about uh, false teachers and so uh, we've started a preaching series at church uh, from the book of Jude and it'll be a five-part series uh, so far we've covered two parts uh, Pastor Gary preached the opening one to introduce the topic and Pastor Very preached last Sunday and so I'm just going to be looking at uh, some of the points that were raised in the preaching uh, last Sunday uh, so um, I'm going to read from uh, Jude, uh, verse 3. It's one chapter, but, but it's just Jude, one chapter, but we're looking at the various verses. So I'm going to read from verse 3 to verse 7. And so it says here, Dear friends, although I, was a very, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith. That was once for all entrusted to the saints. So, right into content for the faith that was entrusted to the saints. That's us. Believers today uh, are in the same trouble that believers then were, and that was contending for the faith against false teaching. And it goes on in verse 4 to say, For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you, and so, yes, there were people who slipped into, um, in and amongst the Christians then uh, with false uh, ideas of, uh, of God and, and of the gospel. And even today we have that in our churches today. And so, again, we must contend for the faith today. So, this was written a long ago and these are people who secretly slipped in amongst them. And then it says here, yeah, there are godless men who changed the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ as our only sovereign and Lord. So looking at uh, and so going so looking at this, you can really see the godless men who are looking for a license for immorality and then denying Jesus Christ as the only sovereign and Lord. And then verse 5 says, Though you already know this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt, but later on destroyed those who did not believe. So already there you can see there's a problem. People were delivered out of Egypt. They experienced a lot of what God had done for them, all the miracles that God had performed for them. But later on, as they slipped away into their own ideas, and fell away from God, they were destroyed in the wilderness. And very few of them actually entered the promised land. And this is where Jude is reminding us about the fact that it doesn't matter whether you've been delivered. You can stand in judgment even when you fall away. And then he goes on in verse 6 to say, And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their own home, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. 
So again, we see angels being judged. Now you'd think angels are already chosen by God and they are part of the, part of the family and they are not uh, under any uh, condemnation. But we see uh, angels are in chains, they've abandoned their own home and they have been kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. So they're not exempt and neither are we exempt. We have the cross, yes, and Christ died for us, yes, but we can choose to rebel against God and that rebellion has consequences. And I like what Pastor Verry says. He says, he reminds and warns those who walk away from the faith, those who walk away from the faith, he reminds them of detestable outcomes of rebellion against God. So there are consequences, consequences and outcomes that can call us, cause us to, to suffer. So, and then he moves on in verse 7. It says, yeah, in a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. And they serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. So we see, we've seen already that in, in Sodom and Gomorrah, God destroyed that city, the two cities. And the reason was because of the immorality, sexual immorality and perversion. And again, he did not... He did not let up. And they received the judgment. The, the judgment that they received was total destruction, as total annihilation, in fact. Um, and so, these are important things for us to understand the consequences of our rebellion against God and against His Word and against the truth. So when, we, when Jude is talking about uh, following false teachers and fa false teachers, the, you know, false teachers themselves, and us following the false teachers, we must understand that we must stay on track, know the scriptures, understand them, spend time in scripture, spend time in, in the word, so we can understand what the truth is. Let us not be naive and follow just any uh, so-called men of God when they speak things that are not right and find ourselves in a bad spot and following the wrong teachings. And so this is what Jude was trying to aim at. Um, so let's work out our salvation with fear and trembling to understand that there is a certain order in the Word of God and it is ultimately for our own benefit. Uh, God does everything out of love. That's why he says he chastises those he loves. And so it's important for us to understand that there's a need for us to follow His ways and not our ways or the ways of other men who propagate false teaching. So we have the privilege. We have the privilege to have the Word of God today and to see what happened to others who went astray. Uh, so we have no excuse because we have the Scriptures in front of us. We've seen what what false teaching does. We've seen what the condemnation was upon uh, following false teaching. And so today we should be better off and understand better that there is uh, a better way and that is to follow the Word of God. And so it says, Today if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. Uh, uh, there was a reference made to 2 Peter 2 verse 4 where we see the angels being held for judgment, and I'll just take us there quickly. I'll read that out very quickly to, to, so that we have. It says here in 2 Peter 2 verse 4, For if God did not spare his angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when, they, when he brought the flood on, on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. If you condemn the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if you rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the filthy lives of lawless men. So what he's trying to show you is the condemnation that happened, but in that condemnation, some were saved who were righteous, 
And so let us, let us make sure that let us not follow what's going on in the world and let's follow what the right thing is, the righteous thing. And, and you see that God will save you from that. And so today we have, it's commonplace now to follow what's going on in the world. This is, this is, this is um, uh, the generation, and, and we've seen many generations pass, but in this generation we've seen again, you know, uh, um, lots of teachings out there that are just have fallen away from the Word of God. And because many are doing it, everyone thinks it's, it's okay to do that. So let's be careful not to do that. And so we, this brings us to just another topic that, that, uh, that Pastor Very raised up in, 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 in the sermon. And that was some churches today following a wrong teaching. And he alluded to the Anglican Church that's saying same-sex uh, marriages are okay and they, it's okay to bless those kind of marriages. He mentioned... Uh, the Pope Francis, who's sent out a paper now to say that uh, all the Catholic churches must must uh, bless same-sex marriages, and again, that that, as far as we're concerned, is not following the Word of God and is is um, is false teaching. Uh, and I want to just give you uh, an example of that. I mean, he was very direct in his preaching, and I just want to say, you know, thank you for for being honest about that and direct about it. Um, and so, uh, I've recently listened to a lady, um, and I'm just going to page to that, uh, some of the notes I took from a, a Dr. Linda Seeler. She, she runs a ministry called uh, uh, Restory, the Restory Ministry. So we see that even from the, the current teachings that are, well not just teachings, but even the, 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 uh, the order of, of various churches, uh, you know, attempting to bless or wanting to bless same-sex marriages uh, and we've seen from just from the Word of God how uh, sexual immorality and perversion was was condemned by God uh, recently I uh, I looked up um, a teaching from a lady uh, her name is Dr. Linda Seeler she runs a ministry called um, Restory Ministries, and I'd encourage you to look it up. And she's got a very st a strong story that she tells. It's a story of her own life as well. She was a little girl growing up uh, with her parents, and she, um, at a small age, young age, she, she, she decided she wanted to be a boy, and um, she, um, she dressed up as a boy. She wanted to be more like her dad than her mum. Uh, she rejected her mother because to her the mother was soft and gentle and and to her uh, not strong and tough like her dad and so she followed that and she eventually what she what she thought in her in her mind is what she eventually became and so she describes this whole story of her life and how um, she came to know Christ in the process or as she grew up and as she came to know Christ she realized that uh, she needed some help because uh, as she read the scriptures, she realized that her being a boy but born a girl uh, was was not following what God had had ordained in His Word for in terms of sexuality, and so she she took up the courage to approach her pastor, and she she mentioned this to her pastor that this is what uh, is her struggle, and she said that she, it was one of the scariest things she ever did, but the pastor gently received that message from her and said to her she was very impressed with how much courage she had to come up with this and he and he took her in he he held, he, he handled her with uh, with compassion but without compromise and i think this is the key thing it's, it's dealing with issues that are not following god's word but dealing with compassion but without compromise and i think this is the critical part of us living as christians to understand What's a compromise against the Word of God? It's not what the people want and what people are doing that, that, that moves us in that direction or the fear of man. It's more the fear of God and what God has decided. And so she, she explains the rest of her story about how she, she came to know Christ. She, she took this up with her pastor and they, they walked together. He walked with her and he got many other people around her to walk with her for a healing process. And then she, she refers to James, the book of James, Chapter 5, verse 16, and I'm going to read that for you. Um, James, James 5, verse 16. 
Uh, says, confess your sins. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And so just her confession and saying that this is a problem I'm struggling with, this is the sin I'm struggling with, that confession began the process of healing. It took her several years to get past this feeling of being, wanting to be a man. And, and she, that was the, the first verse that came up in, the, in, her, in her walk. Um, she said that she, whatever she did behind closed doors, quietly, knowing that there was a con uh, conviction there that what she's doing is not right, whatever was done behind closed doors, and she continued to do it because she didn't have this ability to talk about it. And when she did and asked for help, um, of course the pastor came alongside her. Um, the, 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 the suffering of shame she had, the condemnation she felt, all started to clear. Um, as she said, she says living that life was just not, not she didn't feel right about it. And eventually uh, she, come, she came around to understand who she was as a woman. Um, so I just want to cover maybe a couple of more things in there. There's, there's, there's a need for confession and the healing. Um, and it's a journey. It's just not something, a button you can switch on and off quickly. Uh, there's no need for you to continue to be a slave to sin. And don't try to justify that it's not a sin because, you know, the Word of God is very clear. And, and I'm going to take us to the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1, uh, and just read that. Um, It says here, 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, and I'll read up to verse, um, verse 11. It says, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to say, and that is what some of you were. Notice the word is were. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed. You were sanctified. And you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. So they were that, but they got better. And they were healed. And so, when you see what's, what's put into that whole verse is many things. So we shouldn't just hone in on homosexuality. Uh, there's many other things in there that are sinful. Idolatry. Adultery. Male prostitutes, greed, theft, slanderers, swindlers, all those fall into the same category. <laughs> so we're not saying that, we, we're not trying to isolate uh, uh, homosexuality only. But the fact that all those others are being dealt with and people are being healed of them, the same way homosexuality is also a sin that can be healed. And a lifestyle that can change. Because all these, including greed. So if you say somebody's greedy, but receives Christ in his life, he finds himself becoming generous. If somebody is an adulterer, and he, he, he keeps cheating on his, on, his, on his wife, when he receives Christ, he comes to know that this is wrong. And then he, he becomes faithful to his wife. In the same way, Homosexuality is not something that you have to say, I'm born like this. It's, it's sinful, and you can be healed of it, and you can recover from it. If you surrender yourself and confess it and say, I would like to be better, and the Lord will help you with that. So let's not take it that we're just born that way. There's many things we are born with, including all those other sins that you see there. Many things we are born with, and we are all prone to sin in one way or another. But let's not take one out and say, this one, we cannot deal with it. Surely we can, because this lady who I spoke about, she's dealt with it, and today she's a wonderful woman of God. Wonderful woman of God, and is not trying to look, you know, for homosexual relationships. So let's let's just look at at uh, 
at one of these issues which we know is very contra controversial and even when we was preached in the church we realized it is controversial because the LGBTQ uh, sect is very strong and the voice of the LGBTQ is getting louder and louder in the world and yet the Word of God is what is our standard and this is where we should go for everything and so but let us also look at it with compassion as she says the pastor she spoke to dealt with this with compassion with love but without compromise. Let's not compromise the Word of God. And so let's just love the people who come. People, and not just homosexuals, everyone. And let's not call them homosexuals. They've got a problem with sexuality, which needs to be fixed. The same way an adulterer has a problem that he needs to be fixed. Same way a greedy person needs to be fixed. Let us look at it all as sin that needs correction. So, but also it doesn't mean that as we love you, that we, we must affirm whatever you desire you want to do. It's not for us to affirm, it's for us to point out the wrong and see how we can help you to correct it. And of course, God loves us and will not leave us in the middle of our, of our problem, in the middle of our mess we're in. So it does not mean that we must agree with what you're doing, but we can come alongside you and help you through it. And so let's not compromise the Word of God. Let's call sin for what it is and let's try and help people around us. Let's speak the truth in love. And so I hope I've been able to uh, address this to some extent, but I will encourage you to look at this uh, a little more deeper and even to help people who are around you are struggling with, this, with some of these problems in their lives. And let's see how we can come alongside to help without condemnation, with love, but without compromise. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. So Father in heaven, we do thank you for today's midweek devotion. We thank you, Father, for the sermon series on Jude. We thank you, Lord, for your warning to us to avoid and to, um, to not succumb to false teaching. And so, Lord, uh, I just want to pray that you help us during this time of our walk with you to understand you, to know you better, to know that you're a holy and righteous God. And Lord, for us to live a life that is pleasing to you in every respect. And for us to speak your word in truth and also in love. And so we commit us as a church, we commit every viewer who's on the call this evening, that Lord, you bless us and help us in our walk with you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again and good night.